here at AirVenture Oshkosh down in the ultralight area, a place that has more charm than the whole rest of the field put together, in my humble opinion. Ron Jones, I'm Dan Johnson. Tell me a little bit about this airplane. Well, this is the uh, SNS-8 Hyperlite, uh, just like Mr. Rolls designed it in 1982. Uh, the difference on this one is it's got a, uh, a derivative of the half of EW engine. And this can one, I tilt the prop here a little bit? Yeah, the plugs are on. All right, wires are on. good, okay, so we can see it a little better. And uh, this one, uh, they only made a handful of them back in the mid-90s, but uh, it puts on honest 47 horsepower. 47? Real really? 7. And 4-stroke. Four 4-stroke. Four Burns about a gallon and a half an hour. Uh, it's hard to beat it for economy. Yeah, well, uh, and the engines are not particularly expensive to buy either, right? They're not. They're uh, no reason why you get them for under four grand. Four grand for, four for an aircraft, a four stroke, for a four stroke 47 horsepower. 47 horsepower. Uh, those are some good numbers. Yeah, yeah, and, and it'll pull this thing along at 85 miles an hour without breaking a sweat. Uh, the only drawback is it's a little too heavy to meet part 103. Okay, so this is so experimental amateur experimental built for this one. And you had the credential from FAA, so that's all good and proper? Correct. Okay, great. Tell me about then, as long as it's experimental amateur built, the builder's got to build it. What's he doing? Uh, basically, all he's doing is a lot of assembly, a lot of riveting. Uh, we do all the welding for him, all the machining. Okay. And uh, it's available in uh, a full kit engine fabric everything or we've got five sub kits okay so you could start you could start with just one part of it kind of a yeah. finance program there for you could start with the tail group and then go on to the wings and viral board and, and so on and just pay as you go kind of thing right. yeah. okay that's cool how how do you support people to do that uh well uh we've got uh, full complement of parts in stock uh, every now and then somebody will ask for something that we don't have and it might take a week or two to get up replacement parts, but uh, normally we're uh, either on the phone or we're available online for replacement for factor support, technical help. Okay. And uh, build time for if, uh, on this particular one with this engine, so that he does have to build it. What are we talking about? What's the work effort? Uh, with this one, with this engine, uh, we've got the stitch covering on this. So a guy with average fabric skills, you could build one in uh, between 350 and 400 hours. Okay, still not too bad. So, so you got one that has some different uh, covering to it. Uh, we've uh, covered one with Oritex. It's, uh, it's real easy to work with. The stuff comes pre colored, it's super easy to apply. Uh, basically, it's a two step process. You've got contact cement, you paint your airframe, you paint your fabric, let it dry, come back the next day, lay your fabric on. Yeah, so it's not like a big rush to get it done in a certain no, small no, time period. In fact, you do want to wait a little bit, is that it? Right. All right, that, that's kind of cool. And uh, you just activate the glue with a hot iron. And from there, ah, it's, that's it's, how it works. Huh? It's okay. traditional covering methods. You know, heat shrinking, getting wrinkles out, taping, and, and that kind of thing. Sounds like a lot easier than the uh, more conventional process. Though. It is. It uh, probably take you half the time as uh, wow. the traditional stitch. And you don't have to paint it. Right. It comes pre-colored: uh, red, blue, yellow, white, uh, silver, and black. And you can, so can you mix those different. things up as you, you do can. it? Okay. You so you can, can make you patterns can. on it. Right, you can get creative with it. Uh, so, uh, well, I would think a lot of people would go for that, except for the ones that are really into the uh, conventional style of doing yeah, it. It's a little pricier than a stitch, well, of but of course you're having to do less, so it would right. be more expensive. But at the end of the day, it's it's pretty much a wash. As far well, as painting is kind of a challenge for a lot of people. It's a yes. sort of art. Yes. Some people take it to somebody else to do it. Well, then you got to pay them. If you right. do it yourself, you got to have a place and some equipment so you don't endanger yourself. And, Kind of a big deal. A plane like this, it's real easy to have weight. People like to sure. paint for the purpose and keep spray. Uh, yeah, it's it's on the old it's uh it's nice and lightweight. And with the uh the Zanzibar engine that's our standard one for the old plane, the Lorex will keep it illegal if I want to real. Okay. Wow, this is this looks like a little different project and you're holding some parts in your hand. Uh, tell me about the project and then tell me why those parts are in your hand. Well, this is the, uh, the two-place version of the Hyperlite, the uh, SNS-9. Uh, basically the same airplane, just two-place side-by-side. And a side-by-side, yeah, yeah. So. And what makes this one unique is uh, over the years we've had requests for wood wing or people working with wood. Why do, why do they want that? Either they're not comfortable with aluminum or they're not equipped for it. Uh, a lot of guys have wood shops at home. So we uh, we so wood's a familiar stuff familiar. for them they're, to work with. Okay. They're comfortable with it, right? Okay. 
So we uh, we designed a, a wood wing, same airfoil, same flight characteristics. Um, all the parts are laser cut and uh, conventional covering. This is covered with sticks, but it's uh, everything is pre-cut, snapped together. Wow, that's got to make it a lot easier now. Much. You know, this wood isn't hard to cut, but it's laborious to do this it's, accurately with conventional equipment. It is. It's, it's kind of labor intensive, yeah. but uh, a lot of guys are familiar with woodworking and uh, they're comfortable with it. And uh, the, the big difference is these wings are about six or seven pounds heavier than the standard metal wings. Okay. Well, it's a two place anyway, so this is obviously experimental amateur build. Okay, we always shy away from price a little bit because these videos last a long time, but, but get us into ballpark about both aircraft that we've looked at here. Uh, well, base price on the single place is 1990. Okay. That's worth the Zanzatera MZ2. Okay, that's where the engine then, all right. Engine, fabric, base of flight instruments, everything you need to fly except paint and uh, gasoline. And if you did the Oratex? If you do the Oratex, it's going to be about 22 to 23. It's okay. a little pricier, it's but really not much more considering no. then you don't have to paint. Correct. Uh, which might add a good piece of that to the other price you just mentioned. Right. Okay, and what are you expecting for this? I know you're not quite ready for this yet, so just, you know, we're just wild guessing here a little bit. But The standard kit with the aluminum wings and the 582 Rotax goes for 32000 32000 32, okay. But again, with yeah. engine, two-place aircraft. Again, yeah, everything ready to fly, or everything you need to build a flyable aircraft except paint. And these aircraft have some history. This is not some fresh, fresh out of the box design. Right. This is actually a 35-year-old design. Uh, the SNS-8 made its debut here at Oshkosh in 1982. 1982. The same year Part 103 came out. Right. And a couple the, of months uh, after that, actually. It was the second uh, certified if you will, Part 103 old flight that the FAA recognized. Yeah, that's that's the exact term there. They recognized it. They didn't right. certify they didn't it. Certify. It's a little different game that way, but uh, that's cool. Uh, Ron, where are you located? And uh, then we'll ask you for a web address after that. But tell us where you are, how long you've been doing it first. Well, I'm in Southeast Michigan. Okay. And uh, I acquired the company, the tooling manufacturing rights, in uh, early 2002. Okay. So you've been at it now a few years. A few so. years, yeah. And how's it been going? Uh, it's been going real well. You know, the name's getting back out there. People are more familiar with it. Uh, we're making sure the factory support is there because that uh, your reputation is everything. Sure, right. Well, good for you for doing that. Okay, so Ron, uh, you gave us a lot of great information. That's wonderful. I love those price points. They're right down there where a lot of people can afford one or the other of these airplanes, right. maybe both in some cases. There you go. Uh, where do we find you on the web? Uh, my web address is www.hyperlightaircraft.com. Okay, that's pretty simple. And you our phone number at the shop is 586-212-5862. All right. Well, real good. You can find lots more about all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Ron Jones and I here in the ultralight area of AirVenture Oshkosh.